والسلام وعلى اشرف الانبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين Praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and peace and salutation be upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We would like to welcome you all and greet you with the greeting of Al-Islam. So, assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And alhamdulillah, we officially start our first uh, intensive course for this uh, seminar and conference in the city of Coventry for the year 2017, the second year running walillah alhamd. And we are honored to have our dear beloved Sheikh, uh, Alhamdulillah, which is a, he's a regular and not a stranger to us anymore, uh, Sheikh Abu Sam al Dahabi, Hafidullah wa Ra'a, wa Wafaqahullah wa Kulli Ma Yahub wa Yarda. And Bidnillah, the Sheikh, may Allah praise him uh, and reward him, uh, has chosen a beautiful topic, which is the fiqh of brotherhood as there is so much benefit that we can gain from this beautiful topic. So there is a slight change in to regards to the what has been promised in the, the schedules and the timetable from the book that was intended to be taught, which is Qawad al-Arba'a. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward the Shaykh and increase him in knowledge and light. And without further ado, we let the Shaykh uh, start with Nilah by speaking about this subject. So we benefit Barakallahu fi بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى وصلوات الله والسلام على النبينا المصطفى المجتبى وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وعلى من تمسك بسنته بإحسان إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعض فإن خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدى هدى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محتثاتها وكل محتثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار. Let's begin إن شاء الله عز وجل with the issue of the fiqh of the brotherhood of Al Islam. We're only going to scratch the surface إن شاء الله. This is not a class where I'm dictating notes to you. I don't want you to sit there and just write. If I think that something is really important, I'm going to stop and I'm going to give you an indication you should write that. But for the most part, what I'm going to say is comprehensive and it's a reminder. But I don't want you to sit there and tie yourselves out just writing like that. I want you to understand. This is one of the problems that we have right now in our ummah with the issue of this brotherhood. That we know some things, but many of us don't know how important it is and what El Islam has said about this issue. So a few very quick points, and that is fiqh. Fiqh in the Arabic language, it means understanding. That's what you write. Fiqh means comprehension and understanding. To understand something and to comprehend something. That's the meaning of the word fiqh. In the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, it is a hadith that is mutawatir. Many companions narrated the hadith, Mu'awiyah ibn Abi Sufyan. He said that the Prophet said, If Allah wants good for someone, He gives them understanding of the religion, of the deen. You see? So, fiqh of the deen, fiqh of al nikah, fiqh of al talaq, fiqh of al jihad, fiqh of al salah, al som, al zakat. Fiqh of al-hajj wa al-umrah, fiqh of al-libas, what to wear and how to wear and what not to wear. So many of the Muslims, we don't have fiqh of our deen or aspects of our deen. These people are calling to blowing people up, this extremism and radical Islam that they're upon. They don't have fiqh of the religion. They don't understand the religion. This is not the way you apply and you practice these things. So, we're going to deal with the fiqh of brotherhood, al-akhuwa. I want you to write that as well. Al-akhuwa is an Arabic word that the brother ah comes from that word. Al-akhuwa is one of those words that should be added on to our Islamic vocabulary. Akhuwatun, <laughs> al-akhuwa. So the wow, it has a shadda on it. That's the brotherhood of al-Islam. Fiqh. Al-Akhuwa, the fiqh of 
the brotherhood in Islam. As an introduction, we must make it clear that when we talk about the fiqh of brotherhood, that automatically includes sisterhood as well. We don't want our Muslim sisters, our daughters, our nieces, wives, aunties. We don't want them to be these people who are on that feminist movement, that feminist movement, where because many Muslim cultures are misogynistic, many Muslim cultures are male, you know, they have male chauvinism in it, meaning that men put women down and they oppress them. That's a fact. That's the culture of many African people, many Arab people, Muslims. But that's their culture. That's not the deen. Brother Muhammad came, somebody was sending with the religion that liberated truly the woman. So what happens? Some of the Muslim women, they are like, why can't we have four husbands? And why is it that a man gets two inheritances over the girl? And why were we not equal? Because Allah mentioned that in the Quran, لَيْسَ ذَكُرُكَ الْأُنْفَى The men and women are not the same. So when we say the brotherhood of fiqh, then it automatically includes the sisterhood in the Arabic language, in our religion. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ السِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Oh, you who believe, it is masculine the way Allah is mentioning this. Oh, you who believe, you men, fasting is prescribed upon you as it was upon the people who went before you in the hopes that you have taqwa. So the woman can't look at it and say, why is it always talking about the men? No, because you're automatically included. And you're included for many reasons. I just want to get you one. And it's a principle that comes to us from a hadith. Prophet Muhammad told us, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and nisa shaqa'iqur rija. Women are the twins of men. Write that down. Women are the twins of men. And you don't have to write every word. Write it in shorthand so that you'll know. Women, twins, men. So you know what it means. Women are the twins of men. And that's the hadith. What does it mean? Everything that is applicable to a man is applicable to the woman. Unless another proof comes to show they're not the same. So when Allah said, oh, you believe, you must fast, no one can stand up and say, this is just for the men, linguistically. Let's talk about the men. It's masculine. We say, no. That command is general for men, women, Arabs, not Arab, the rich, the poor, the one who is educated, the one who's not educated. It's for everyone. But then there are exceptions to that. Fasting is not for the traveler. Fasting is not for the one who's under age. Fasting is not for the non-Muslim. Fasting is not for the woman who's on her period. So whenever you have in the religion, in the religion, Allah says do this, the Prophet said do that, so Allah said it, it includes men and women by default, everybody. But there has to be an external proof, another proof that comes to show a difference. So when we pray, when we pray, men pray and women pray. We have to pray the same way. She has to put her arms the same way the man makes sajda. She does everything the same. Not like what some of the medhab say. That when she does her sajda, she has to bring her body in because she has to cover herself. Get out of here with that. The prophet said, pray the way you see me praying. And he said that to everybody. He didn't say, you men, pray the way you see me praying. Women pray differently. So the iman is going to stand in front of the people and lead the salah. But for the women, she doesn't stand in front. She stands in the first row in the middle because there's a text that came and did that. When the imam makes a mistake, the men say, subhanallah. The women don't say, subhanallah. The women clap because there's a difference, a delil. The best role for the men is the first row. The worst role for the men is the last row. The best role for the women is the last row. The worst role for the women is the first row. So there's a difference because the delil came. So my point here is, when we talk about Islamic Brotherhood, it includes automatically sisterhood. All right? So let's deal with this issue of Islamic Brotherhood. Islamic Brotherhood. The Islamic Brotherhood, Ikhwani, is an issue that Allah has established the hujjah and the delil against his community, against his ummah, against human beings, by 
sending the Prophet to his companions, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, radhi Allah anhu, ajma'in. The companions were just like us in terms of them being human beings and in terms of them having a lot of the drama that we have that keep people apart. In that, they had misunderstandings, they had skirmishes, they had racism, they didn't get along in Jahiliya. A man will kill you because you looked at him the wrong way. You stepped on his foot. Just like the people of Jahiliya now, with gangs and the way people behave in the city, wherever you live. Prophet Muhammad came to a group of people who were similar to us. And he brought the blueprint for success. And this is why we say, no room for innovation in that Islam. Because the companions with Dwamu Boy Alayhim, they showed us what the, what the blueprint is. So don't do what they didn't do when it comes to your aqidah, when it comes to the issue of your religion. So Allah has told us a lot of ayat of the Quran, telling us about their condition. Listen to what Allah mentioned, the number of ayat. And there are many. He said in the Quran in Surah Ali Imran, وَاَعْتَسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا وَاذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ عَدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَاسْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا وَكُنْتُمْ عَلَى شَفَى أُفْرَةٍ مِنَ النَّارِ فَأَنْقَذَكُمْ مِنْهَا كَذَلِكَ يُبَيِّنُ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ آيَاتِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَهْتَدُونَ Allah told the companions, رَضِي اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ and hold on to the rope of Allah all together and don't be divided. And remember, you used to be enemies one to another. And then Allah brought your hearts together. And you on the brink of the hellfire. And you're about to fall in before Islam came to you. You're going to die. You'd have been on the, in the hellfire. But Allah saved you from it. In the hopes that you will be thankful or you'll be guided. So that ayat is talking about the condition of the companions when the Prophet came. So the light was said. The Arabs were fighting each other. They were against each other, even the one tribe. They're one tribe. But someone from the tribe will find a reason to break off with the other part of the tribe. And then they will always be divided, always fighting each other. So what do you think the case was when one tribe meets up with another tribe? They thought they were better. They were always fighting with drama, always. They had every reason to be apart. So Allah mentioned that to them. Allah mentioned another ayat of the Quran. I want you to be aware of this ayat. He said, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, لَتَجِدَنَّ أَشَدَّ النَّاسِ عَدَّاوَةً لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا الْيَهُودُ وَالنَّصَارَى You will find those people who hate the Muslims more than anybody else. They are the Yahud and the Mushrikun. They have the most animosity. That's what Allah said. If anybody else from Benny Adam comes and tells you something else, don't listen to him. You'll find the Jews hating you more than everybody else. And the Mushrikun. Why the Mushrikun? Because Islam is the deen of a Tawheed. And this is the people of Shirk. They don't want Tawheed. So people who have shirk and their Islam even, certain Muslims, when you come and you say, don't make dua to that dead man, don't make dua to, they'll say, what have you? And they don't like you because they have shirk in how they worship. And the Yahud. And that's because, again, Ikhwari, the Yahud, uh, as a group of people, have always been enemies to the prophets and the messengers based upon the narrative of the Quran. They used to kill the prophets, they used to kill the messengers, and they used to be very jealous of this ummah, as the Prophet, as Allah said in ayat in the Prophet. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that they, the they have a lot of hasid. Point I want to bring to your attention. When Prophet Muhammad came, Abu Bakr and Umar, they're from the Arabs. They became Muslims and they became the brothers to Bilal ibn Rabah. And Bilal is from Ethiopia. The three of them, they became brothers to Salman al Farisi. Salman was all the way from Persia, far, far away. The four of them became brothers with Suhaib al-Rumi. Suhaib was in Rome. 
He grew up in Rome. He was a Roman man. So all of them, with El Islam, they came from different parts of the world, different cultures, different backgrounds. But Islam, Allah brought all of them together, and they became brothers. And then we find some of the Jews, like Abdullah ibn Salam. He was a leader of the Jews from the Ulema, like our mother, Sophia bintu Huyi. She was from the Jews. They became brothers and sisters to one another, although they had all of those differences. So Al-Islam, the Quran, the authentic Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, and other issues caused those people and taught those people how to be brothers. Mini ayah. I'll give you one more ayah and we'll move on, inshallah. Ayah that describes the condition of the <coughs> companions during that time. How they were against each other. The society, people are in the society without a slam, there's going to be enmity and animosity. Because people don't like those who are different from them. People are xenophobic. I don't like you because you're different. Allah mentioned in another ayah, who will let you aid Yedaka be Nasri will be Mukminin? Wallow and fuck the Mafil Ardi Jemi and Ma and left the Baina to do be him, but I can no laha and left a Baina to do be him, no laha in no who Azizun Hakim. Ya Muhammad, it is Allah that helped you. Allah helped you with His Nasr and He helped you with the believers, Rabbi Allah. Had you spent all of the money in the earth, Muhammad, to bring them together, never would you have done it. Like right now. This one is from Pakistan, Newcastle. That one is from Mirpur. This is from Subani in the north. That one is Sumani in the south. This one is a river, a white person. That one over here is up. So you want to just unite them without a slant. I just want to unite the people. I said, I'm going to give you a thousand pounds, you a thousand pounds, you just be united. For a little while, People will act united, but at some point, the reality is going to come out. And that is, I don't like you, and I don't like your ways, and I don't like how you do things. Because there's nothing governing us. So all of the money in the world would not force people to be united. Republican Party, Democratic Party, Labor Party, whatever the group is. When people come together, if they don't have Islam, they don't have Islam, it's going to be a problem. And that's why Allah will tell you many conditions of non-Muslims like that. تَحْسَبُهُمْ جَمِعًا وَقُلُوبُهُمْ شَتَّى You think that they are united, but their hearts are divided. So in the ayat that we're dealing with, Allah said, Ya Muhammad, Allah helped you with his nasr and with the believers. If you, Muhammad, spent everything in the earth to make them united, it never would have happened. But Allah united their hearts and brought them together. And Allah is most merciful. And Allah Ta'ala is wise. So it is Allah is with Jal that unites the hearts. Allah. Which brings me to the next point in this introduction. How are the hearts united? Is it just from the empty slogans, getting on the microphone and bringing out unity, unity? No. The ayah said, وَعْتَسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِعًا Hold on to the rope of Allah. I want you to write this down. The ayat, rope of Allah. What is the rope of Allah? What is it? Allah commanded us to hold on to the rope of Allah. Anybody want to try that? What is the rope of Allah? What does it mean, the rope of Allah? Someone, help me. What do you think it is? Islam. Hold on to Islam. That's one meaning. Good job. You. Quran. The Quran is the rope of Allah. That's the best answer because that's what came from the Prophet. He said, Al Quran, Habnu wal memdud, min al sema'i il al arf, tamasuku bi. The Quran is the rope of Allah that extends from the heavens to the earth. So that's a proof. Allah Azrajal is over the seven heavens. The Quran is the habl of Allah. It comes from the heavens to the earth. Hold on to it. So unity doesn't come from just screaming. Empty slogans. Al Khilafa, Al Khilafa, Al Jihad, Al Jihad, Al Islam, Al Islam, Unity, Unity. Those words are important, but without any actions, it's Kalam Fadih. So when someone says, We want to acknowledge 
as the Jewish capital, Palestine, Jerusalem. Muslim who knows his religion doesn't get all upset because mere words don't mean anything. They don't get me upset to that degree. If this thing is Khamer, and I change the name, and I start saying, no, it's not Khamer. These are spirits. This is feel-good juice. I changed the word. It's feel-good juice. Because if you do drink it, you're going to feel good. But does that change its reality? It doesn't change its reality. So here, what is unity? It's not screaming, unity, unification. Unity is people holding on to that Quran and following that Quran. And by default, the Sunnah. And the Quran and the Sunnah has shown us many things we need to do in order to be unified. And one of them is not to be separated and far apart. And there are many issues. We'll come to those things. Now what I want to deal with, and this is the crux of the matter, inshallah, as we gentlemen, is that the brotherhood in Islam, the Khwani, it has some arkan. Anybody know what the word arkan is? Arkan. What is arkan? You, you, with the hat on, you. What is arkan, that word? You. Mm -hmm. The pillar. The pillar is the plural for the word rukan. Rukan. A plural is arkan. Rukan is one, arkan is plural. Everything has pillars to it, like this building. And the pillar is the strongest part of something. That's the definition. The strongest part of something. It's the foundation. If your foundation is weak, then whatever is built upon that foundation is weak. So we have a relationship. How many of you are married? How many of you married? Those of you who are married, your marriage has pillars like communication, like trust, like mutual respect. Like loyalty, like honesty, like insijam, harmony. If you're married to a girl and she's seven feet tall, you have to look way up there to look at her. Or she's a midget. I don't think they call her midgets anymore. She's a dwarf. She's real short. It's going to be some issues. And that's why I always tell these people who are reverse to the religion. It comes into the religion, she comes into the religion. And people around them start saying, you got to get married, you got to get married, you got to get married. And that's beautiful. Okay, I want to get married. Yeah, okay. Okay, we got a nice brother for you. And then they take their sister to a brother who's a dwarf. We're not against the brother who's a dwarf. He's our brother. But there has to be some harmony between them. She wouldn't look at him in Jagadiyah. What do you think? She's going to look for him and they say, they say no, no, you just got to love him. If he said, be the lad. No. Every relationship it has is pillar. Your marriage. If you don't communicate, problems. If there's no insijam, harmony, problems. No trust, problems. Your friendship with your brother, your friend. They have, everything has pillars. So, the brotherhood of Al-Islam has pillars. Islam has pillars. Arkan of Al-Islam. The Arkan of Al-Iman. Everything has its pillars. Your car has pillars. Everything. And if that pillar is weak, then what is built upon it is weak. So the brotherhood of Al-Islam has pillars, but because the people don't take care of these pillars, our brotherhood is weak. Our brotherhood is weak. And that's why if you look in the Middle East right now, and I don't want to be of those people who I just have these problems with the Arabs of the Gulf states. No, I'm just telling you something that's a reality. When it was said that Jerusalem is going to be the capital of Israel, Muslims got very upset and they jumped up and down. But you didn't find the Muslim countries coming together saying, no, we're going to boycott America, we're going to boycott them, we're going to stop them from doing this. And everybody came out in one voice and said, we're not going to let you do this to our brothers and their land. You didn't find that. But you will find the Muslim states of the Gulf, the Gulf states, coming together to boycott each other. You'll find them doing that. They'll come together and they'll boycott the Qatar or this one or that one. So many of you will sit there and you shake your heads. But we do the same thing, as you're going to see. And that's something that freaks me out about the double standards of the people. I want you guys 
to be careful of being from the mutaffifin. Wailun lil mutaffifin. Alladheena idha ktalu ala nas yastawfud. They have double standards. If he buys something, he wants all of his haq. But when he gives people, he gives them some. No, you gotta be fair and just. Fair and just. So we say, why is it that they don't come together and boycott those Jewish people, America, and make them stop supporting that? But with each other, they boycott each other. You're gonna see the same way. We do the same thing to each other. We're gentle, we're nice to non-Muslims. And when it comes to our Muslim brothers, even our own relatives, we're not nice with them. So what are the pillars of the brotherhood? The pillars of the brotherhood are three. And we're going to explain each one, inshallah. But I need you to understand this. The first one is a toba. The second one is a salat. The third pillar is a zakat. Those are the three pillars of the brotherhood in Al-Islam based upon the Qur'an and the authentic Sunnah. In the Qur'an there is a surah called Surah At-Tawbah, At-Tawbah, and then put slash Al-Bara. This surah has two names, At-Tawbah and Al-Bara, like Al-Wala wa Al-Bara. Al-Bara, that's the name of the surah. It's the only surah of the Qur'an that doesn't start off with Bismillah, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. It's not an ayah from this surah. It's the only surah out of all of the surahs. It is an important surah, Surah At-Tawbah. So surah, you should try to read the tafsir of that surah. Memorize from it ayat and read it. Because this surah establishes that the brotherhood in Al-Islam is built upon At-Tawbah, As-Salat, and As-Zakat. Allah mentioned in two surahs, two ayahs from this surah, two. He mentioned the first ayah. He said in the Quran, فَإِن تَابُوا وَأَقَامُوا الصَّلَاءُ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاءُ فَإِخْوَانَكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ Pay attention. Pay attention to this. Surah Tawbah is one of the last surahs that was revealed. So Allah is telling the Prophet in the first ayah, صلى الله عليه وسلم, يا محمد, these mushrikun who are fighting you, Abu Lahab, Abu Jahl, and all of these people who are fighting you in your religion. Allah said, if they make Tawbah, and they establish the Salat, and they give you the Zakat, then they are your brothers in the religion. So Allah made them brothers if they do those three things. And that I in Surah the Tawbah. And then, it's been repeated in another ayat. And the second ayat is important that you write this down. It's called ayat to safe. Ayat as safe. That's the ayat of the sword. As safe is the sword. So they just call that ayat to safe. And sometimes a Muslim just has to know. Ayat al kursi. That's the name of it. So you know what it's talking about. Allahu la ilaha illa. Ayat al kursi, for example. It's a certain ayat they have names. Ayat to dame. The ayat of the dead is the longest ayat of all of the Qur'an. The longest ayat. So this is called ayat to safe. You should know about ayat to safe that this ayat abrogated more ayat than any other ayat of the Qur'an. There's a science in the Qur'an called an nasikh wal mansukh where there's a ruling and then another ayat or hadith comes and it makes it mansukh it wipes it off with a new ruling, like you could drink hummer, and then it was wiped out. Don't drink hummer. This ayat abrogated more ayat than any other ayat of the Quran. And that's because many of the ayat that were revealed in the beginning of Islam that told the Prophet ﷺ to make an afu and a saf, forgive them, overlook, turn the other cheek, don't fight them, be easy. That's what they were commanded to do at the beginning. But then when Ayatul Saif came down, no more of that. So Ayatul Saif is said, فَإِذَا سَلَخَ الْأَشْحُرُ الْحُرُمْ فَاقْتُلُ الْمُشْرِكِينَ حِيثُ وَجَدْتَمُوهُمْ وَخُذُوهُمْ وَحْصَرُوهُمْ وَقْعُدُوا لَهُمْ كُلَّ مَرْسَلْ فَإِن تَابُوا وَأَقَامُوا السَّلَاءُ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاءُ فَخَلُّوا سَبِيلَهُمْ 
Allah said in this ayah, ayah to save. If the sacred months, if they pass by, then lie in wait for the polytheists. Take them and grab them with strength. Surround them and barricade them. Wait for them in every way, every highway, every byway. Deal with them. But if they make toba, they make salah and give zakat, then let them go. So those two ayahs from Surah to toba establish the brotherhood of Islam is built upon a toba, a salah, and zakat. So if you were asked the question, what are the arkan of the brotherhood of Islam? You're going to say, a toba, salah, and zakat. Where does that come from? The delil for that is in Surah Tawbah. It's in not one ayah, but two. And one of those ayah is the ayat of a safe. Everybody with me up until this point? So it's simple. You don't even have to write this. You can understand it. There's going to be a lot of information, so I will say you got to write some stuff. All right, now we have to explain it now. The Brotherhood of Islam is built upon these three pillars. What does it mean, a toba? What does it mean the person becomes your brother when he makes toba? It means two things. The first meaning is, as it relates to mushrikun and kuffar, as it relates to kuffar, a person is a Catholic, and then he makes toba. Once he makes toba, he's your Muslim brother. Allah said in the Quran, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَى The Muslims are brothers. Allah said that in the Quran. So nobody can come down and say, no, he ain't my brother. He's a white man. He ain't my brother. He used to be a Jew. He ain't my brother. He used to kill the Muslims. So I give you an example of a personality. There's a man by the name of Benjamin Netanyahu. You heard of that name? He's the leader of the oppressive Israeli state. He's a monster. He's a war criminal. Hypothetically speaking, if he embraced Islam and he made Toba and left Kufr and Shirk, Prophet Muhammad said, Al Islamu Yajubuma Kana Kablu. Islam wipes away everything you did before. So if that man accepted Islam and he came into this room and we knew he accepted Islam, we have to embrace him as a Muslim. You can't keep looking at him and say, Oh, that guy is a criminal. He killed the Muslims. Oh, that guy, you ain't my brother. Nah. And that's what used to happen during the times of Jahiliyyah. People killed the Muslims, like a man by the name of Washi. Washi. His name was El Washi. He was a slave of one of the Kufar of Quraysh. And that man knew that El Washi was good with weapons. He said, if you kill Hamza, Hamza, the uncle of Rasulullah at the Battle of Vedr, so I said, you could get free. That man, he ain't got nothing to do with Islam spreading, not spreading. He doesn't care what's the drama and the beef between Rasulullah Sallallahu and Abu Lami. He don't care about that. But when the man said, look, you get your freedom, just kill Hamza. He was like, okay. So he went out there in the battle of Badr. He found the opportunity. He killed Hamza. And they gave him his freedom. He ran. He gave his freedom. Later on, he became a Muslim. He came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi to embrace Islam. Prophet Muhammad loved his uncle, Hamza. Rasulullah turned away from him. The man went to the other side. Rasulullah turned away. The man went to the other side, persisted, insisted, showing he's sincere. He's not playing around. Rasulullah knows there's munafiqun. If this man was playing around, when the Prophet didn't give him love at the first, he would have walked away. But he was insisting. He kept coming in his face. And then the Prophet accepted his Islam. Rasulullah didn't say to the man, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you killed my uncle. No. The man made toba. So in America, we have a lot of racism in our America. White people better not come to the area where we came from, where we live, and we better not go in their area. Because if you come in our area, you're not going back home. And if we went in their area, we're not coming back home. So a lot of racism. That's why the present president is the president. Because America loves that kind of stuff. So now, as a Muslim, I embrace Islam. I meet Lee. Where I grew up at, 
I don't like white people. There's racism in my mind where I come from. I don't like them. So if I see one guy is boxing, he's black, the other guy is white, I don't know either one of them. I hope the black guy beat the white guy up. Not only just win the match, but knock his brains out. Because it's just the racism. But now as a Muslim, I need a white brother. I need a Jewish person. He used to be a Jew, and I knew he was a Jew. A Jewish person, his ethnic group, his heritage. Once I see that, I have to accept this man. And some of us are not like that. And that's why you'll find when the revert becomes a Muslim, we don't want to marry him off to our daughters, for an example. And he may be a better prospect than your relatives or the people from your group, for an example. I was in Medina, where I used to study. In the month of Ramadan, the month of Ramadan. How many of you have been in Medina or Mecca in the month of Ramadan? Any of you? On Monday, in Ramadan, they bring out food. These long things where you come and you eat. They break your fast. You have like uh, yogurt, have nice bread, dates, you know, things like that. Zamzam. And it's nice. I'm sitting at the Prophet's Masjid, and it's getting close to Maghrib, and then an old man started talking to me, Arab man. He said, you speak Arabic? I said, yeah, I speak Arabic. He said, where are you from? He said, what's your name? I said, Abu Sam. I said, it's your kunya, what's your name? I said, people know me, my kunya. And I said, we're talking. He said, where are you from? I said, from America. He was shocked. He said, are you a Muslim? It was Ramadan, and I'm at the Prophet's Masjid. But it was because I'm from America, he's thinking to himself, Americans are not Muslims. But that question of his, it is to the point I'm trying to talk to you guys about. Don't treat the revert person as if he's a second class citizen. He may know the religion better than some of you. He may practice the religion better than some of you. So revert people, they have virtues. And people were born and raised in Islam, they have virtues. And both groups have to come together. I've been in these messages in this country. Masjid was right next to my house. My house. There are no houses between me and my masjid. But I didn't pray in that masjid because they were brewies. Not only that, but when I went, I didn't know what they were upon. When I went to pray in the masjid, they all kept looking at me like I was going to steal their shoes or something. They didn't make me feel like I was a brother. That's the point. They made me feel like I didn't belong. And this is why that cultural Islam is not going to work. There's not a Somali masjid, Pakistani masjid. This is the problem with our community right now. Some people understand brotherhood just in the narrow scope of their group. Brotherhood is, if you're from the Ikhwan Muslimin, you're my brother. If you're from Jamaat Tabligh, when I talk about the six points from Jamaat Tabligh, one of those points is Ikram and Muslim. Honor the Muslim. But he's only talking about the Muslim from Jamaat Tabligh, the one who is a Sufi. Brotherhood is from his Sufism, the hardcore Salafi people, the hardcore ones. Brotherhood is what he understands, his understanding is. If you're not with us, you're against us. That's not the brotherhood we're talking about. We're talking about the universal brotherhood of Al Islam, not Somali brotherhood, Pakistani brotherhood, African American brotherhood. But based upon the thing. So, at Toba, it means if a person was a Catholic and he accepted Islam and made Toba, he's your brother. No matter what beef you had with him before, his embracing of Islam. You guys got that? There are some people who have some serious problems. Like in America, again, the Bloods and the Crips. You heard about the Bloods and the Crips? Those are two gangs. It used to be in California. Now they're all over the place. They kill each other because of colors. Red and blue. We have all kinds of gang mentality and membership amongst the Muslims. In London, maybe he, I don't know about Coventry, but in London, people committing crimes because of the area code and what neighborhood they live in. What kind of nonsense is that? So now, 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 this person was in that gang, and I'm in that gang, and we used to hate each other. So once he becomes a Muslim, I'm a Muslim, that's your brother. No matter what the rivalry was between you, no matter what the drama that used to happen. Because the Prophet 
showed us where Washi killed his uncle and didn't keep him and hold that man responsible. The second meaning of a toba is if the person is a Muslim, he's a Muslim. But he made a mistake against you. He did something against you. He borrowed your money and he didn't pay you back. He married your sister and he didn't treat her well. He did something to you that caused you not to like him anymore. And he was oppressive towards you. He said something about you, wrote something about you on the internet that was a problem. Something happened. So Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu, he said that the Prophet said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, la muslim in yahjira akhahu muslim folk thalath al-iyad. It's not permissible for a Muslim to boycott his brother for more than three days. So Islam gave you the right to boycott someone three days, your brother, three days. That's it. After three days, you guys have to make peace between yourselves. And the best of the two is the one who initiates that. So you've been having beef with him for a year now, two years, three years, five years. What you're doing is haram. Because Allah said if they make toba, the man made toba. He said, I'm sorry. He said, forgive me. He said, my bad. He said that the day of the Eid, before he went to Hajj, when he came back from Hajj, he made toba. And he wants to do restitution. You have to accommodate him. That's the point. So some of us, we have these long-standing problems with people that has transpired for a long period of time. Because you don't understand the brotherhood in Islam. You only got three days. That's it. Three days. So that's the meaning of Torah. If a person is a Kafir and he left Jahili and came to Islam, he's your brother no matter what you don't like or didn't like about him. Number two, if he's already a Muslim and he made Toba, I did this to you, I did that to you, I'm sorry. We have to relax. Okay? The second pillar, as salah What's the delil and why has it been made a pillar? Allah's Prophet told us, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Al Ahdu Ladi Bainana Wa Bainahum as Salat, Min Tarakaha Fakat Kafir. The difference between us and them is the prayer. Whoever abandons the prayer has disbelieved. So the Muslims, the Muslims are brothers to one another. Not brothers to non-Muslims. So the one who abandons Salat is a non-Muslim. So he's not your brother because the Sunnah negated that. Listen to this hadith. From what proves the Salat establishes the brotherhood, tremendous hadith. He said to the community, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Men salla salatana wa staqbala qiblatana wa akala dhabihatana fadhaka al-Muslim lahu maal al-Muslimin wa alayhi ma'alayhim. The hadith said, anyone who prays the prayer that we pray and he faces our qibla and he eats halal, the biha, like us, then he is a Muslim. He has rights over the Muslims, and the Muslims have rights over him. Why? Because he made salat, and because he faced our qibla. So again, if you see someone who used to kill the Muslims, and he was a bad individual, and he used to do craziness, I see him praying. I got to accept that man as my brother. Now some Muslims, I used to remember when in the news in the Muslim world, when they bring the leader of that country and they put him on TV on the day of Juma, he's praying on the camera. He may be looking at the camera, he doesn't have concentration. So some of the people who have this ghira for Islam, you know, young people, Especially the people who are very emotional. They say, look at him, he ain't really praying. Look, he ain't praying. He's looking all over the place. He's a munafiq. He's just faking. Man, that ain't your job to determine that. When we get up and pray, us, 
Who from amongst us, even if you're not really concentrated as we should for the prayer, who from amongst us is going to accept someone saying, looking at you, saying, you're not really praying, you're just doing that to show off. We're going to say, man, you mind your own business. Stick to your lane. Get out of my lane. What are you talking about? So why is it okay for you to reject someone doing that to you, but you do it to other people? So if you see that ruler, that oppressive person, someone is doing, he's praying. That Romanians, you know those Romanians? The Romanians, they spread all around this country now. They come to my masjid. They sit in front of the masjid and they say in Arabic, Fi sabilillah. Fi sabilillah. Okay. I say, don't speak bad to them. And don't give. And don't prevent yourself from giving. Test them. There's a surah in the Quran called Al Mumtahina. The surah testing. Test the women when they come. See if they're real believers. You test them. All right, I'm going to give you 10 pounds, 5 pounds, but I just want to make sure you're Muslim. You got hijab on, I just want to make sure you're Muslim. Prophet Muhammad had 11 wives. Just name, you know, two wives. Give me two names. Me no speaking the English. That's what they say now. Me no speaking the English. Oh, you don't understand me now, huh? Because she doesn't know the two names of any wives. She's just faking. She's just trying to get money. Playing it off like she's a Muslim. So the guy is standing at the door, but when it's time for Juma, when it's time for prayer, he doesn't come in. He doesn't come in. So you test him. So the Salat, the Salat. If someone is praying, he's your brother. He's your brother. He may be a beggar. He may be a homeless. He came to the masjid. We think he's just coming in here to get warm and get some tea and stuff like that to warm up. That may be the case. That may be the case. But as long as he went and they will do it, he's over there praying. It's not your job. It's not your business. You have to look at him as being your brother. A salat makes a person your brother because the Prophet suddenly negated, negated. People who don't pray as not being our brothers. And there's another issue with our ummah today. Many people don't pray. Many people don't pray. And I'm sure there's not a person here except you know people who don't pray at all. And some people only pray when people are around. Some people only pray Juma. Some people only pray the Eid prayer. But look at the brotherhood of other Islam today. The issue of Salat is compromised. I don't know most of you. I don't know most of you. I don't know. Many of you are young. What is your situation with the prayer? As for Zakat, as Zakat. And many ayat of the Quran, Allah Ta'ala established in the Quran, and those who believe and give zakat, big salat and give zakat. Zakat and salat is always together. But one of the big proofs that I want to use for this is what happened with Abu Bakr as Siddiq, radiallahu anhu. When the Prophet died, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam, Abu Bakr sent the people as the Prophet used to do sallallahu alayhi wa to get the zakat. So when he sent some companions to get the zakat from the people in the deserts, the people in the deserts who lived far away from the city of Medina, in the middle of the desert, the people came and said, give us your zakat for the Baytul Mal, for the Amir al-Mu'minin. Those people were Muslims. They said, we believe in la ilaha illallah of the Rasulullah. We believe in salah. We believe in zakat. We believe in song, we believe in hajj, but we're not giving you any more money. We're not giving you money. We're going to keep our money to deal with it ourselves. So that man went back to Abu Bakr and said, hey, they don't want to give us the money. Abu Bakr told the companions in Medina, we're going to go and fight them because they left this land. He called them the Murtad Deen. Anybody know what Murtad is? A Murtad. You're a Murtad. What's a Murtad, Muhammad? A person who apostates. You're Muslim, and then you leave Islam. You're murtad. So this is a vocabulary word you should know. Murtad dun. Write it down. Or one is a murtad. Murtad. M-U-R-T-A-D. A murtad. Hey, you, my man, right there. My man. What is a murtad? Oh, you're looking at the paper, man. Hey, you back there with the classes, you're not working. What's your name? You're not writing. Yo, yeah. Yo, yeah. 
A is Nepasti. Murtad. That's a word you should know. Murtad. So Abu Bakr told the companions, Umar and the rest of them, I'm going to fight them. Listen, Umar said, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen, how are you going to fight them and kill them when they say, La ilaha illallah, I'm the Rasulullah, they're Muslims. Abu Bakr said, Wallahi, if these people used to give Rasulullah, for example, this hat, they would give him this hat for a zakat, and they don't give me that hat, I'm going to fight them. And then he started giving them the proofs. Prophet Muhammad said, for an example, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Umirtu an uqatil nas, hatta yashhadu wan la ilaha illallah, wa anna Muhammad an abduhu wa rasooluh, wa an yaqimu salat wa yutu zakat, fa idha fa'alu thalika faqad asar minni dima'um wa amwalum illa bihaq al-Islam, wa yisa'alum ma'ala Allah. Look at this delil. Look at this delil. Look at this delil. What's the pillars of brotherhood? At Tawbah. Salat and Zakat. Abu Bakr said to them, Prophet Muhammad said, I have been sent to fight the people. See, these people not giving Zakat. I've been sent to fight the people until they bear witness, La ilaha illallah, Hamdar Rasulullah, Tawbah. And until they establish the Salat and give Zakat. And if they do those three things, then they will be protected. Their money and their blood. I won't take their money. I won't kill them. But if they do something like they kill someone, will shed their blood. They do something. So that's another delil about those three things. So as zakat, Abu Bakr as Sadiq. This incident is famous. Abu Bakr, he went and waged war against a group of people who were Muslims. They accepted all of the pillars, but they rejected a zakat. They said, we believe in it, but we're not giving it. Abu Bakr said, we're fighting you. And the companions didn't agree with that until he started bringing them proofs that if you don't give zakat, you're not a Muslim with us anymore. And that's because, Ikhwani, our brothers have a right to our monies. Allah mentioned in the Quran, وَمَنْ يُوقَ شُحَ نَفْسِهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمَ الْمُفْحُونَ Anyone who is saved from being extremely stingy, he will be successful. You guys, you have a right to my money. And I have a right to your money, if you need or if I need. In Surah at tawbah is the ayat of a zakat. The eight people who get zakat. And from those eight people, from those eight people, the fuqara, the masakeen, the ibn al-sabil, the one who was traveling. Our Muslim brother comes in this door right now and he says, Hey, I come from Newcastle. And I don't have any money to get back to Newcastle. I need money for the train. We find out he's telling the truth. He has a right to our money. To get him back to where he comes from. Allah gave that the right between the Muslims. That if someone comes and asks you for money. And he's telling the truth. He has a right to our money. Because that zakat and that money is one of the things that help us to be brothers, and it connects us. So those are the three pillars of brotherhood. You guys understood what I said? It's not complicated. Those are the three pillars of brotherhood. And each one is important in its own right. Now I'm not here to just give you some information, and theoretically, you get the picture. No. Theoretically, you have to get the picture, and then we have to practice that. That brother did something to you. You weren't speaking to him. You weren't speaking to him. He apologized. I'm sorry. Why are you still his enemy? He's your brother. Can't disconnect from him like that. That individual who came to Al Islam before in Jahiliya, if you were in the car in the car park, you get in your car, and maybe you see a black person walking by the car. You don't know him, but he's black. You lock the door just because he's black. Because some people like that. We have that stuff that separates us in society. Be scared of these people. One example. Some people are like that. Now before we move on to the next one, inshallah, I want to ask, do you guys have any questions about anything concerning the three arkan of the brotherhood? Any questions? Fadl, what's your name? Uh, Imran. Imran, where are you from? Uh, 
يمن انت يمني؟ يا يمن يا يمن الله يا مراد تفضل يا بيسي يو سيد ماي كويشن از اف البابا دوزن اس فور فورجيفنس اني هي وينت اجينست يو ميد ا ميستيك يو نيد تو فورجيف هيم اور دو يو ويت؟ امرأة ما تريد أن تفعل شيئاً إذا كان شيئاً يفعله أنت هل يجب أن تفعل هذا الشخص؟ هل يجب أن تفعل هذا الشخص؟ لا، لا يجب أن تفعل هذا الشخص لا يجب أن تفعل هذا الشخص هل يجب أن تفعل هذا الشخص يوم القيامة؟ أو يجب أن تفعل هذا الشخص في الدنيا؟ إذا كان شيئاً يفعل شيئاً يجب أن تفعل شيئاً يجب أن تفعل شيئاً أو يجب أن تفعل شيئاً ويجب أن تفعل شيئاً فقط تفعل الدم إذا كان شيئاً يفعل شيئاً لك وإذا لا يجب أن تفعل شيئاً You don't have to forgive him. You say, Yom Al-Qiyamah, there is a meeting between you and me in front of Allah. That's your haq. Al-Imam Al-Nawwi, Al-Imam Al-Nawwi, his nickname was Muhyiddin. You know, back then, these people from the Muta'akhirin, from the latter scholars, they had this, pra this practice of Give a nickname, Sadruddin, Fakhruddin, Tajuddin. They would give those names to scholars. Shihabuddin. They called them Imam al Nawi, Muhyiddin. And this is the point. He used to say, Anyone who calls me that nickname, Muhyiddin, I will forgive you in the dunya. You and me in front of Allah. Because he didn't want people bigging him up like that. He didn't want people bigging him up like that. He used to say, when did Islam die that I came and I gave it life? His humility. So now we have people who will come and say, you're mubtadi, you're mubtadi. You don't have to forgive him for that. Yawm al-qiyamah. Yawm al-qiyamah. There's a mahkam between you and me. So no, Akhi, you don't have to forgive people. But if you do forgive people, Inshallah is better. Inshallah. The Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Arham man fi al-ard, Yarhamkum man fi al-samai. Have rahmah on the ones who are in the earth, the one in the heavens will have rahmah for you. So if you forgive people, Allah will forgive you. And in that man, from the companions, who made up the story about the slander against Aisha, he said that Aisha, committed fornication, adultery. And he was one of the people talking about it. And Abu Bakr used to be responsible for giving money to this man and taking care of him because this is his relative. Abu Bakr Aisha is his daughter. And that man is their relative. And that man was saying, yeah, she did it, yeah, she did it. And then when the issue became clear that she didn't do it, and Allah exonerated her, Abu Bakr said, well, why? I'm not giving you any more money. Allah said in the Quran, don't say that. Wouldn't you love for Allah to forgive you? So forgive him. So Abu Bakr forgave the guy. But it's up to the person. Any more questions, Ikhwan? Any more questions? Okay, close your books. Close your books. Close your books. Turn your papers over. Turn your papers over. Very quickly. Turn your papers over. Close your books. Turn your papers over. Turn your papers over. All right. The Arkan of... The Arkan of... Brotherhood. Brotherhood. Somebody tell me what is the meaning of arkan? What is the meaning of that? You, Muhammad. Pillars. So pillars. And what did I say the definition of a rukan was? What is a pillar? What's the definition of? What is it? I said it was the strongest part of something. The arkan, the rukan of the building. Janabu Shayl Atwa is the strongest part of something. Okay. What are the three pillars of brotherhood? What's your name, man? Fahim, Fahim, the one who really understands. What are the three pillars of brotherhood, Fahim? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Toba, a salat, and a zakat. Okay, my man, right there, right there, right there. A salat is understood two, a toba is understood two ways, two ways. What does it mean a toba is a pillar of brotherhood? What does it mean? What two ways? Explain it. You're not sure? What does it mean? Uh, so for, uh, for a non-Muslim, he accepts Islam. For a non-Muslim accepts Islam, he becomes your brother. 
An example of who? Who? Al Wahshi, who killed the Prophet's compa Prophet Muhammad's uncle saw Sallam. What's the second one? Uh, that if a Muslim makes a mistake and uh, he repents. If a Muslim makes a mistake and he repent, you have to reconnect to him, treat him like your brother. Good job. As Salat, as Salat, as Salat. What's a Dalil? That Salat is one of the pillars. What's a Dalil? Salat is a pillar of brotherhood. Good job, good job. And what's another proof? Good job, good job. What's the third hadith and proof that we gave you? Anybody else? Whoever prays our prayer and faces our qibla and eats our meat, he's our brother. Okay, you. What's your name, son? Yusuf. Okay, Yusuf. What is the name of the ayat and what surah is it in that shows us the three arkan of the brotherhood? What surah is the ayat in and what's the name of the ayat? Ayat to safe, which means what? The ayat of the sword. Good job. This is your brother? How old are you? 99. How old are you? Nine. All right, sit up. Get strong. Sit up. Tell us, what does ayah to say? What does it say? What does that ayah say? What does it say? Tell us what it said. Someone said it already. If they make toba and they make salat and give zakat, then leave their way. Khalu sabilahu. Okay, a zakat, a zakat, a zakat is one of the pillars of brotherhood. One of the pillars of brotherhood. One of the pillars. How do we know that? Yeah, you would me. You, you. How do we know a zakat? Now. How do we know zakat? Yeah. We have to pray. You're doing what my kids do when they don't want to give me the answer, you know? Some of them are very weird. You, know? you ask them a question, they, they talk, you can't hear them, but they make these movements. No, man. What is the delil from the zakat? Gotta hear you. What? Give generously. Give generously. My man, right here. What is a delil? A zakat is a pillar of brotherhood. My man. What is a proof that a zakat is a pillar of the brotherhood? <coughs> Yeah. Anybody? Anybody? Any? Does that mean um, our money belong? Well, your, my money belongs to the brother. Oh, it's like if someone wants to, if they need to go somewhere, and they got money, you just give them. Money. Yeah, but I'm looking for a delil. From Abu Bakr. The Abu Bakr al Siddiq. He said, I'm gonna fight these people if they don't give zakat. Although they believe in all of these things, Islam, they're not giving zakat. We fight them. And Umar and the companion said, how? They said, la ilaha Allah. I'm the Rasulullah. You can't fight them. They're Muslims. And then he used another delil to show. No, they're not our brothers. What hadith was that? What hadith did he use? Hmm? Muhammad. So is it, uh, Shaykh, is it like, like they used to give the hat to uh, Prophet uh, but Yeah, but then he said, I heard the Prophet say, to show his point, why he's going to fight them. I have been commanded to fight the people until they say, La ilaha illa Muhammad Rasulullah, establish salah, give zakat. Okay? All right, guys, we're going to take a break. We're going to take a break, but before you go, inshallah, you've got to hurry up and come back. It's only a five minute break, that's it. On a scale of one to ten, I'm going to give you guys about a six for the first section. For the first session. And that's because you didn't ask. Any questions? And then when I came and I asked you questions, some of you were lost in the source and you wasn't cooled up, which is okay. But that's why you ask questions. Because if you didn't understand, ask questions. So I'm going to give you about a 6.5. 6.5. I don't want you sitting here just taking notes. I told you. I want you to understand this thing so that when we leave this place, inshallah, we know how to be brothers. We know how to treat people as brothers. All right, five minutes, five minutes, inshallah. 
a brick.